Welcome to Come On You Spurs TV, where we talk about everything Spurs. Today, I've got two guests, and we are doing a preview of the quarterfinal matches. This is where we get to the business end of the World Cup. The World Cup has shown up so many fun matches up to, up to now, and we're looking forward to the next uh, installment of matches. With me, I've got Chuma. I said Chuma. No, I've got Yinka, and I've also got Ben. Uh, ben is one of our... Uh, regulars and Yinka is a new guest with us today. Um, so join us on the other side. Time, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs TV, where we talk about everything Spurs. Well, a bit of a Nigerian bent to it because, I mean, obviously, I mean, most of us come from a Nigerian background, but that's not to say that we don't discuss everything Spurs dispassionately, and we're doing just that today. Now, today we're focused on the World Cup, and we have had absolute fun thus far. I mean, today we're being joined by Yinka. Yinka is, is a new guest on the show. <laughs> Hello, sorry, also not you know, welcome to the show. How are you? Before me. <laughs> welcome to the show. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm good. Um, I'm wearing my Brazil shirt here just to keep um, the whole World Cup flavor and theme going on. And uh, yeah, um, to say that I'm support, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether I'm supporting Brazil. I've got, I'll, we'll get into that later on anyway. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd have a, an international shirt for the World Cup theme. For today, are you doing some sort of antidote against the cold, like some sort of Copacabana antidote? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I am. I see that we have. I'm wearing short sleeves and, and a woolly hat at the same time, so you can see I'm very confused right now. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> ben, how are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Pleased to be here as usual. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to looking forward to the quarters. Um, with with I, I'm not wearing a. a do you, you want to get a little bit closer to your mic because you seem to be a bit distant on the sound of my uh, um, Ben. How is that? Ah, much How is better that? now. That's much better. Right. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm wearing the, the the red of Belgium. Oh my goodness! I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't. We should we cut him off <laughs> at this point? I'm red and Tottenham. You know, we don't really. Mix, but even that, any, you know that AIG. You know how much complaints that we had. Cause we had a red logo for our sponsors on there, like there's still backlash on there, isn't it? Yeah. They, 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 know, they, they it's, um, it's it's um so let's let's just sort of cast our mind back to how we got here in the first place. I mean we we had what a round of sixteen and that round of sixteen threw up a lot of great matches. I mean we we'll just sort of do a just a quick look back and see what what what, what we had uh, before we got here. Netherlands played the USA. I mean, uh, Netherlands came out on top. That, no surprises there. You know, Argentina, messy show against Australia, uh, which was good. I mean, um, it, it came out on top. So, it matches up Argentina against Netherlands from there, right? For me, Japan was probably the disappointment in that, um, that matchup and against Croatia because I thought they played well. In the group stages, they beat Spain, they beat um, Germany, teams that you thought they wouldn't get out of that group, and they came out on top. So for me, I thought it was a bit, of disapp a bit disappointing uh, the way they played against uh, Croatia. They had plenty of chances, but they couldn't put them away. And um, Croatia used to, let me, let me guess, use their experience to overcome. And then we have Brazil, Korea. I mean, you can talk us through that one. Brazil versus Korea. It was a it was a coming out party for Brazil in regards of their it's a pretty young team actually in, in regards of like you know they, they've got players that have maybe not got a wealth of World Cup experience and in their in their group games you know losing to Ghana in the last game like people were trying to doubt Brazil so going into the career game obviously they've rested a lot of players in that Ghana game so coming back to their full strength team for Korea, it was a coming out party. 
literally, because not only was it um, our guy, I call him Crazy Charlie because Richarlison is just crazy. I love him, right? But also, like, um, we had Vinicius Jr. come out. We had some great team goals. We had the celebrations. We had the samba back. They had their swagger back. And it was just a, really a, a great sight to behold. You know, that's the World Cup Brazil that we've all come to love over the, over the years. And, you know, at least for one game, they showed what it was all about. So, yeah, big up to Brazil. Um, Korea, on the other hand, they just never turned up. Like, Son was anonymous in the game. And, you know, he hardly got a kick. But And we've got to remember something about this Brazil team. As much as we like the flair of them going forward, they've got that steel at the back. You know, we, we hear of their statistics of like, it might be 17 games and they've only conceded three goals in that time. So they've got a, like, a really staunch defence with Thiago Silva and um, Marquinhos, I think it is. I think they've made a real great um, centre-back partnership. Obviously, Alisson. Alisson made some great saves in that game as well. So it could have been a lot different if Alisson hadn't made those saves and career took them chances. But that's what the that's what the knockout stages are about. You've got to take your chances. You've got to, you know, be clinical. Totally. I mean, that, uh, that's, that, that sort of sums up um, that very, very nicely. Have you done this before, Inga? <laughs> Punditry. Well, not really. Not really. Uh, this is my first time. This is my first time doing it. But that's at the same time, um, yeah, I do watch a bit, of, a bit of soccer, football. <laughs> yeah. Depending on where, who's listening to this, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Soccer I mean, thanks, thanks for that. I mean, and then Croatia, though. Croatia seemed to be like, okay, you have plenty of uh, experience in that team. They've probably mm. got the oldest squad, I mean, apart from Belgium, who, who are out, I mean, uh, in this World Cup so far. I mean, and um, average age uh, wise. But that experience seemed to have shown in, in their match against um, Japan. They didn't capitulate, I mean, yeah. against the energy, you know. It might have plenty of energy and, you know, closing you down throughout the match. But they, they kept them at bay and um, Perisic's goal was absolutely fantastic. I mean, that header oh, wow. was what? Uh, top class. Yeah. Top class. It, it, was, it was a great header. I, I, what, what I loved about Perisic's performance was his two-way performance against Japan. Not only was he... Because you know he's playing a different position than what he plays at Spurs in regards to... It was more of a front three on the left position that he was playing. So, but he didn't shirk his defensive re responsibilities and he was really like tracking back on the wingers. He was putting a shift in both ways. And what he's shown is that, you know, are we missing a little bit of that at Spurs? Like we're listening, you know, that um, final third Ivan Perisic. We see the, the, the defensive Ivan Perisic, but you know, maybe there's an opportunity that we can explore a bit more with him, a bit further up the field. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I, I mean, think, I think, yeah, I think it's not some, some people it's would, would say, I mean, given the way Spurs are set up at the moment, right, it probably, you think, okay, if you played him up front, well, who would you who would you take out? Son? So, or would you take out Kuzeski? Or would you take out Richarlison? What would you do if you were the coach? Well, well, we've got a real big issue with this Richarlison and Son kind of... Um, conundrum, right? I know what you're saying. Uh, yeah, the conundrum of... They don't turn up. Like, Son has not turned... We, I think I know why Son has not turned up so far at the first part of the season. Because there was so much pressure on him to represent Korea. In the, he couldn't get injured. He couldn't... You know, not, you know, you could see that he was almost kind of managing himself for this World Cup. So we might see a different Son, that, you know, in the second half of the season. Um, as for Richarlison, he's, he's clearly played out of position. All right. You see him play for Brazil as a, you know, a, a number nine um, fox in the box. And, he ha and you know, with the right pieces around him, he comes alive. This is it. This is it. But don't forget that he's got what? He's got Neymar, he's got Vinicius, he's got all sorts of service uh, coming to him. We've got Deki, we've got Kane, we've got Deki again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, know, I know what you mean. I, I definitely know what you mean. Like, he has more surrounding him in, in that part of the field that allows him to not have to, you know, put it... Um, what was really impressive, um, just talking about Richarlison quickly, is his work rate as a number nine that we've been seeing. And the way he presses from the front as the first line of defence is really impressive. Um, uh, sometimes I kind of doubted it. I thought it was, his work rate was a bit lacking at Spurs. We didn't really see that. But on the Brazil shirt, you know, his, 
he's running around all over the place now, you know, closing down defenders, closing down the goalkeeper and that. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, uh, Ben, I mean, Richard, listen, your favorite, one of your favorite players. We have, we, we call him Coconut Head in a, in a, in a small chats group. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Someone named him Coconut Head. Now we, we won't go down that route yeah. on, on this one, but hey, he is an absolutely special player. For me, he's got the two best goals of the World Cup so far. I mean, just. I mean, you wear the white shirt for 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 this, for this discussion, you got. <laughs> Remember that's uh, basically the first spectacular goal, right? But this one, yeah, he actually started the move with his There's head. The team goal is a with brilliant his head, goal, yeah. You know, twice, held the ball twice, passed it and moved into. It was an absolutely yeah. brilliant, brilliant goal, you know. And that yeah. tells you about you know Brazilian skills for, on show. You know, it was like. It just made you love football again, you know? Ben, you're quiet. Yeah. Ben, you're not, saying, you're not saying much. I want to hear from you. <laughs> no, y- y- Yinka is doing well. He's doing well. I was going to call it the Yinka show. <laughs> you're doing well for the first time, to be fair. Thank you, sir. And, um, Thank you. No, y- 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 you know what I feel about Richarlison. Richarlison was phenomenal, actually. He was absolutely phenomenal. And as Yinka said, um, he's out of position in Spurs. But what they can do is actually play, they can swap, they can actually get Kane to rest. They can swap him out. So Kane plays first half and and then second half, um, Richardson plays. Or mm. we play 4-3-3 and get Kane to be one of the midfielders because he's our Ericsson, isn't he? And then we can play yeah. Richie up front, um, Son and Deki either side of him, um, and then Kane and two others in the middle. I think I think that works personally. Yeah. For some matches, I, I think that works because Kane's always in midfield, always distributing. And so he could be nine, the catalyst. Right, yeah. He could be the catalyst for, for Richie because he can get Richie the ball. And then we can see Spurs slash Brazil. Brilliant. I, 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 I love I love how how we've all uh what's that thing called? Um I think what what we're doing is in in a, in a sense when we look at 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 um, positional play vis a vis the league, right? Premier League is totally different from the World Cup. Don't forget that a we have teams that have only players that suit their countries, right? In the Premier League, every team can can play can 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 feel a team that can play in the World Cup. <laughs> and more, <laughs> you know, because we have we have teams that set up differently every week, you know. So you have to have not just attacking flair going forward. You also have to have solidity at the at the back, and you need to work really really hard for thirty eight matches, not just one match, but for thirty eight matches. Tournament play is totally different from from a league play, you know. So I think. That, that's where the um, the tactical news of managers come come in, you know, whereby they look at the big picture, they look at managing the squad, they look at managing the, the players week in week out. They look, they look, you know, all those things are things that we don't see on on um, in 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 our in our own estimation. Oh, we just say, oh, we want them attack it, attack, 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 attack. <laughs> you know, because the, the formation we, we, we've spoken about so far is is essentially attack based. You know, it has not to do with defense, defense management, uh, not to do with midfield and ensure that you are protecting the back four. And these days, you find that the first line of defense always starts from the press. You know, you don't want to initiate the press, you know, and that's, that's like modern football for you these days. You can't almost like, without the hard work of the forwards, the whole team is dead, basically, you know. So it's, I think that's what, that's, that's the reason why Conte plays the way he plays to ensure that we mm. remain resilient, you know, um, in, in 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 our play. However, we, we we still have the World Cup to look forward look forward to. Let, let's leave Spurs for for a minute. <laughs> right, you can never leave Spurs. You can never leave Spurs. <laughs> Come on, you Spurs. <laughs> anyway, right. So it, it brings us to what. Um, this this set of matches we were talking about uh, Brazil and uh, Croatia. 
Of course, we've got England yeah. and France. England beat Senegal 3 0. Uh, great performance, you know, absolutely fantastic. France walloped uh, Poland and setting up very, very nicely I mean, for that England France game. Uh, we'll, co- we'll come to that in a minute. And then Morocco versus Portugal. Morocco is a surprise, uh, surprise team, I mean, in this lineup. I think probably the only surprise or uh, the last of the, in quote, lesser teams. Um, um, at this stage of the World Cup, and they've done very well to get here so far. You know, I actually tip them to go even further. But here, we'll, we'll look at the matchups in, in, in a bit more detail in, in, in a minute. But so far, so good. Um, Yika, where do you see the, the World Cup? I mean, I mean, where, how, where, as things stand now, how mm-hmm. how, how 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 would you say we, we things have, have I mean have turned out so far in the World Cup? I mean, um, one of the things I've learned is that. This World Cup, it's if you turn up on the day. Because there's been such little time for preparation and, and it's been very condensed. It's about what team turns up, what team shows their, imposes their will and their strategy and executes their game plan on the day. You see teams like you expect them to turn up and they haven't turned up. And before you know it, they're out of the tournament. Belgium, for example, um, that, you know, just been fallen by the wayside. So... Now we're in the quarterfinals, as you mentioned before. This is where the big boys turn up. This is where your um, your Messi's and your Ronaldo's and your Bellingham's and your Harry Kane's and your you know every team has got big boys in it now. There's no team that hasn't got st- um, stars. Even Morocco, like people are underestimating Morocco. And I want to mention now, and I'm going to put it out there: Morocco is going to. St- there's still another twist in this, and I think Morocco still has a lot to go for because they have that um, host nation kind of energy behind them now, being the last African and Arab nation left in the tournament. I feel that, you know, um, all those neutral supporters in the ground will be backing them against Portugal. So I think there's still a lot to come from it. And they've been, to be honest, there's only three teams left in this World Cup that are undefeated. Netherlands, England and Morocco. Everyone else has been beaten so far. So they're unbeaten still at the moment, and I think that there's still another. They still got another good game in them, even though they could go to extra time and they, they might be leggy for the Portugal game. But um, Portugal don't underestimate Morocco by any stretch. And I mean, I mean, I think England are probably the only team that haven't considered any goal in the, in the World Cup so far. I mean, left of the. They scored two. They scored two. Two against Iran. They scored two. Sorry. Oh, considered two. Sorry, yeah, considered two against Iran. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so yeah, they have considered that. But that's when they were sleep. That's when they fell asleep at the end of the Iran game. They already, they already um switched off by then, I think. <laughs> yeah, against Iran. But um, it and and that that is gonna be that's the that's the Achilles heel going into the tournament. That was the Achilles heel of England that we were saying that defensively they may not be up there with the rest of the teams. But you know, um, credit credit to um Maguire and Stones. You know, they've, they've been doing the job. Uh, it's only when Eric Dyer came on that tweet that they could see the goals. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That, that oh, is really. cruel. The that freak. is cruel. Anyway, but I... Listen, so far, so good. I think... if let, Let's look at the matchups and see... Let's have some predictions of what, what we're looking at um, for, 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 for the quarterfinals. Okay, so Argentina are playing Netherlands, right? On paper, yeah. it looks like an even match on paper. The reason I say even match is this, right? People will probably tip Argentina, given pedigree, the fact that they've won two World Cups, they've got history, they have, oh, they have Magician Messi with, in, in the team. Um, and you have, I mean, young upcoming players of like Alvarez, you have, um, you know, Romero is solid in defense. Okay, he makes one or two errors here and there, but I mean, but he's not, not fully fit yet. But he's got Otamendi there with plenty of experience, you know. And um, Otaro Martinez, you got, you know, you got quite a tidy, tidy, tidy lot there in that team, you know. And mm-hmm. for me, I don't, I mean, I'm not sure, I don't see how. Uh, Netherlands are going to overcome overcome them. I mean, what what do you reckon? Let, let's let's let's. Uh, Let's look at that first match and see what 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 do you guys think, Ben? Yeah, well, 
as long as they don't play Lota, Lota, whatever his name is, Lauro, whatever the guy from 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 Inter. As long as they don't play him, I think they can they can overcome any opposition they get. But that guy messed up. The, he messed it up. He was he was giving balls so many times by Messi, and he just fluffed them. Uh, I remember one particular case where we were thinking right in front of the goal, didn't go in. On a play. Yeah. As long as they don't play him, Argentina will be a match for anybody. Um, um, not to talk of who they're going to play now. Yeah. Who are they playing? Who is Argentina playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, realize who they're going to be. Netherlands. Because the Netherlands, Netherlands, yeah, Netherlands are not going anywhere really. They're just they're the same as Belgium. Belgium. Um, Having said that though, I mean, if you look at Netherlands and um, okay, they've got uh, Louis van Gaal, very experienced manager. And, and, um, there, yeah. Look at the back line. Back line has got I mean, a, a massive goalkeeper. He's like what six foot ten. <laughs> You know, it looks like that. And uh, you got right, Virgil Van Dijk there. You got Nathan Ake. Don Fries is um is like a solid, I mean, reasonable wing back. And then you got Danny Blaine. You know, so it's not not a bad back line at all. You know, mm. in, in, in You know, I, 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 I think I think the, the biggest, biggest advantage for Netherlands against, against Argentina, Argentina is actually. Louis van Gaal and his tactics that he's deployed within this World Cup so far. Yeah. He's not been as expansive as maybe Dutch teams of the past, and they've been pretty much quite a compact and technical unit. They have not opened themselves up. Maybe that's the reason why they've been, un uh, you know, they're undefeated. So I don't think it's going to be a walkover by any stretch of the imagination against the Argentinians, but the Argentinians have the magic man. And the magic man is after... You know, you know is after, after that, that pinnacle. pinnacle. We can't, can't underestimate how much Messi wants, wants to win this World Cup. Cup. It's, it's the, the last dance, it's the last tango, it's his last hurrah. It, it can't, can't happen, happen after this. So, so he's, he's going to leave it all out there, there in this, this match. match. So, so in, I, I can't see, I can't see Argentina not getting over past Netherlands. As good as Netherlands are, I don't think they've got enough to overcome. The magic, the magic man and the rest, rest of the, of the team. team. So, predictions on this one. Tell me. Has that a, a scoreline? 2 0. A scoreline? Score line. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> I've got this issue with Romero. I'm going to say it out now. Yeah? I think Romero, yeah, he has been off work at Spurs. Coming, coming into this World, World Cup. Cup. If, if they, they play, play him, him, he's actually been found out more, more than often. often. And I believe if he does play, Holland will score or Netherlands will score, score and I'll make that... It, 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 it could be 2-1, 2-1. Two one, two one. Two one. Let me not go around the world and I'll just say 2-1 to, one to, one to, to Argentina. 2-1 to so Argentina, you think Romero will have a howler? Uh, and contribute yeah, to the goal? Okay. All right, Ben? Didn't you... Didn't you notice? I noticed, I noticed the, the first, first match, match they played. Do you remember Romero wasn't there? He he didn't he didn't start the match, and they were that political in that first match. But you know when he came back in, when he came in, I think they brought him on in the second half, didn't they? When they brought him on, no, he started, he started the first match. He started the first match, he started the first match and he was rubbish. He was the one that conceded the goal against the Saudis. He got cooked. He got turned inside out, and then, um, they went into the top four, and then they took him off. And it's and in the second match that they played well. well. So that's what I'm thinking, would they bring him back now? I don't think they will. I don't think they will now. If they do, um, that's when I think, think that the Netherlands will have a chance because I think he's been a bit of a weak link in the defence for Argentina. That's, that's a bit of a shame, but we, we consider him very strong for Scott for, for Hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's um, not so solid. We've got no one else, unless we're going to use Sanchez. <laughs> No, no, stop it. it. Sanchez is doing it. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, Ben, what, what, what's the scoreline? 2-0 for me. 2-0 to Argentina. Argentina, Argentina a Romero won't play. Just a okay. second. Right. So, 2-0. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm inclined to sort of go, go along with you guys. I mean, unless, of course, that's a big surprise that... Uh, Van Hal has obviously, obviously, but Gapo might, 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 might turn things up for them. You never know. Gapo is my daily look, look alike, you know. But um, yeah, he might just uh, do the business. And Dumfries, 
Come Freeze has been has been really good so far. Yeah, yeah. we could you do know. with him. We could do with him, isn't yeah, it? We could do with so, him. Yeah, that's um. Maybe. But let's see. It might, it might it might have a Memphis the pipe, you know. You know, winner. Yeah, well. okay. put it in the locker. Put it in the locker. Like, like Klassen, the pipe, um, whoever. You know, they they've, they've, they've got, got you know they've got it in their locker to you know to score a goal. But I just don't think they're gonna have enough quality to to get past Argentina. Okay. Unless so they Marrero. Yeah, all right, so here we go. Um, next matchup, we have. Um, who do we have next? We have. Um, Brazil. We have uh, Mr. Brazil and Croatia. Done deal. Okay, okay. Um, ben, are you going on this? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go, I'll go straight away. Go, I'll go straight away. It's actually going to be a thrashing by Brazil. Brazil. 4-0. Wow. Wow. No, I, I see where you're coming from. It's not, when I think about it, that's not such a, a, a wild prediction. Because the Croatians are going to have a whole 120 minutes and penalties in their legs. Those are old legs already. They're not young, sprightly legs already. So, uh, and the Brazil are youthful, and they've got that youthful exuberance about them, you know, especially in their front line with Rodrigo, um, Vinicius Jr., and Richarlison. And Neymar being fit again, you know, that that's most probably the best front floor four in the World Cup that we've got at the moment, um, barring England. And I'm going to say England have got one of the best front fours. If you're playing Bellingham up, up there, there. We'll, we'll go, go to England in a minute. minute. So, so I, I think it's, I, I, I don't think the Croatians are going to be that open. open. Similar to the Jap Japanese, Japanese, they play a quite tight game. game. They play a quite they technical play game with Luka Modric in the middle. middle. Um, so I, I think it's going to be quite tight. It's going to be a 1 0. 1 0 Brazil. I don't think the Samba boys are going to be running over them. For me, the way the Jalison is playing so far, right? And the way they're combining up front. I mean, you got Vinicius on his day when he's on, and when he gets his right, that final pass is just there's just too much for any team, you know. And first goal, what, what, what they've done, yeah, what they did against, I mean, you know, it's it's magical. It's magical. I mean, and I think they're going to turn on magic again. You know, who are they playing against? Okay, they got that Gadio guy who's like really solid in the in the center of defense for. Um, for Croatia, he's really solid actually. But Lovren, Lovren is a calamity waiting to happen. He's gonna get caught. He's gonna exactly. get caught. Robin, Robin's, 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 Robin's gonna, gonna get Brazilian, Brazilian barbecue, barbecue, no, no doubt, doubt about it. it. So, but I do like the, I do like the, the you know the, the other guy, Go, 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 the ten year old. He looks yes. good. He looks he's like solid. a baller. He's solid. You know, he's a really solid defender. So I think that's when Wiggling lies in that central defense. I, I, I think they play three at the back. So that, that's. That might be a bit of a, a bit of a problem for them, but who knows? Let, let's see, let's see what happens. Now, for me, the, the, the match, the matchup of the of the of the quarterfinals is France and England. You know, yeah. yeah. Now that is the match to look forward to. Um, and this it's, is the one. It's, it's, yeah. it's a really really spicy spicy match. A lot of people have England as the underdogs in this match, right? And for good reason too. And the, the reason they have that England as as underdog is. Clearly, Kylian Mbappe, you know, <laughs> because he's a one moral squad on his own. However, however, right, I think a lot of people are underestimating England because I think England have a really solid team, you know, and people, maybe because what them we watch the Premiership week in week out, we probably don't appreciate the quality of that squad. For me, Harry Kane is probably one of the big, I mean, one of the best strikers in the world. At the moment, on, on current form, he's very adaptable. He can he can play up front. He can he can come come back and he can make goals as well. You know, on his mm -hmm. day, he's a threat for any team. You know, on his day, he's a threat for any team. Okay, you got Mbappe, who and then you, I mean the France team have loads and loads of talent. It's scary. If you look at that score. <laughs> but he's not the only threat. That's the thing. He's not the only threat. You got you got um, yeah, yeah. Bele, you know, you have Giroud. Giroud has outscored Henri. Can you believe that? 
Mm. You know, I mean, yeah. yeah. It, it sounds like it sounds almost too good to be true, but there he is outscoring um, um, Mr. 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 Thierry. I mean, come on, for you to do that, there has to be something up in your locker, you know. And look at the midfield. I mean, if you look at, I mean, Kante is not there, Pogba is not there, but somebody said something to me though that matching up Hurricane against Barane. Hmm, I'll, I'll, I'll give Arikane a good chance, you know, in in in, the, yeah. in, the, in those circumstances, right? And I've got Phil Foden, you know, best weekend mm. count, and it's not, he's very very good. Saka, okay, he plays for the other side down the road. Um, I mean, I know, but he is really good as well, you know, cutting in on that on that left foot. I mean, and he, I think. That England front three, adding Bellingham to that equation, I think would be a threat to, 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 to France, you know? If England don't show respect to France, I think they've got a good chance, you know? Mm. And, okay, Maurice keeps, I mean, go for, I mean, for us, we can wake up, but he's prone to the odd error, you know? And if they put enough pressure on him, he's a good shot, shot stopper, but when it comes to playing out from the back, we put pressure on him, don't let them play off on the back. I mean, or, or make, let, 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 I mean, try and let him play off on the back. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's, um, yeah, we've got, we've got a good chance of, um, of, 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 of turn, 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 turning France over. But it's going to be a good match. Predictions. All right. Um, you haven't mentioned the glue guy for France. You said everybody but the most important player for France. He's played 80 consecutive games under this coach. Do not underestimate the importance of Guizman in this game. He is someone that is the extension of the coach on the pitch in regards to tactics and the way that they play. He plays a deeper role than maybe what, is, that what we're used to seeing in him. But I've watched all the French goals, and all the goals have gone through Guizman at some stage. Of, of, of their play. play. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that he is one of the men to watch, or one of the players to watch in this game, game. Um, and his influence that you'll have on them. For England, England has something that they, 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 they tend to, they've had it in years gone by. They've had it with Michael Owen. They've had it with, um, uh, I'm trying to think of, yeah. with Paul Gascoigne in the 90s. They've had it, they have a player that the world doesn't know about yet because they've not been birthed onto the scene. And they burst on the scene in the World Cup. Cup. And, and that, that young, young boy is Bellingham. He's an unknown quantity on the world stage. stage. Similar maybe to what Mbappe was four years ago as a 19 year old, where, whereby they, they, he's an unknown quantity and he's ready to go. I think that Bellingham is a key player in this particular game because he's playing fearless. We've seen what happens with fearless players on this stage. They've got, they've got no. Worry, worry about, about you know, what's, what's going to happen or any anticipation. So, those, those are the key, key players for me. I know that Harry Kane will turn up. Harry Kane will turn up in some way, shape, or form. I don't think he will. This game will pass him by without him putting his influence and stamp on it. Um, you know, we're talking about this key matchup between Carl Walker and Mbappe. Is Carl Walker going to be the Killian killer? Whew. I've, I've, I've seen, seen Mbappe, Mbappe toast, toast a lot of guys in this World Cup. He is toasting. He's doing things that, like it's a training. Like you're watching him, you think, is this like training for him? You see the way he destroyed Poland the other day with like training ground goals. And people are blaming the goalkeeper. No, no this kid is just next level. He's looking to take the mantle. I'm the top boy in the world now from Messi and from Ronaldo. Um, you make a point about Maurice. The Reese has, has a wreck in him somewhere, somewhere, but at the, the same, same time, time Pickford, I call him Pickford T Rex because he's got the shortest hand of the goalkeeper I've ever known. He's like, <laughs> like a Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex. <laughs> With his short hand. So he's, he's just, just as bad, bad as well. Like, like, both keepers have got errors in them somewhere, somewhere. although both, both defenses, defenses have been played by like Eason. My, my prediction, prediction, huh? If it goes to penalties, forget England. Forget England. So England have to get this down before penalties. Because if they get to penalties, that, 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 that thing in their heads, heads that has lasted for the last, last 30, 30 years, years about losing penalty shootouts since 1990, I don't, I don't think, think is going to 
last of all. But I think they can do it in the 120 minutes. Some way, somehow, they can do it. So England, 2-1 or 3-2. If it's a 3-2, it's a classic. That's what I'm going to say, but... Okay. Yeah. Do you know how? Do you know how? There's, there's a guy right, he doesn't know how. Hag. You must <laughs> be his relative. <laughs> there's a guy on our on our forum. It's called Alexander Hag. You know, we call him Hag. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. Tell me, uh, Ben. Do something. Ben. Talk to me, Ben. Talk to me, Mr. Ben. Talk to me. Okay. Listen. We, we you talked a lot, and I enjoy what you're talking about. You talked a lot about. The, 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 the shortcomings of both teams and everything else. But one thing he didn't say was, how how is the defence of Stones and Maguire going to deal with all those picking attacking players from France? Gee whiz. Look, I've, I've watched England play. I've watched them in the group matches. They were in a pretty easy group, let's be honest. They were an easy group. But, but, but Stones and, you know, they could have been in the same group with Germany and Spain. You know, yeah, remember, 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 was it Germany and Spain that were in the same group? Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, they were in the same group. group. Um, but but England's, England's play was very pedestrian. You know, you know what, what England don't have, have, what England rely on is the passing. passing. They, they tried to be, to be like, like Spain, Spain, in that yeah, Spain, Spain always pass. Yeah. yeah. But they, they, they know, they know, there's hard, apart from Jude, no one else is really, Jude and Kane, because I love Kane. When he plays for Spurs, when he plays for England, the ball, it's, it's like, like they've got a bit of string on the ball, and, and the ball is just following wherever he goes. I love the way he came plays, but he's at the wrong end of the pitch. You know that coming into this World Cup, all the pundits were saying the Achilles heel of England is going to be the defence, because the defence has been poor all the way through. I mean, they were knocked out of the Nations Cup and everything else. You know, let's not forget all that. So, matching up the defence against the attack. I think they have a problem. But one thing we have to realise is this match between England and France is going to be like a derby. Because even when even when France, because I remember watching this early days, even when France were, were not even the world champions, but they were playing really well, when they played England, it was normally a 1-0 one, one match, or maybe England actually beat them once. You know what I mean? But this is a different kettle of fish, to my mind, because England don't really have an offence. I mean... You say Maguire, Maguire is great. Maguire, Maguire is made, made great, great by, by the guys around him. him. When, when is it man you, the players around him are just crap and he just pulls the players all over the place. <laughs> pulls them out of the place and, and the opposition scores goals. So I'm, I'm really, really worried. I want England to get through. I, 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 no, no, no love lost between me and France. I want England to win. I live in England and I want them to win. But I think it's going to be a bridge too far because they haven't got technical players, to be fair. The only, the, thing the, the, the only thing they do technique, technique, in the tech, with, with any technique, technique is actually to pass the ball. And, and sometimes when they do that, I mean, when, when attack comes, start coming, you look at the other teams, you can have three or four players around you, they just turn and, and, and then shove the ball off. But England players, they just send the ball back, send it back, and it goes back to Pickford. And then Pickford just blasts it out and it goes off. And then attack comes back again. I saw the match between Senegal and Senegal, no match. For, for Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Senegal, no matter for France, but the first, first 35 minutes, minutes they put pressure on England, England, and I was scared for England. I was scared for England, England. For England. But, but somehow, somehow African teams, teams. You know, there's a the thing. I remember watching Nigeria when they when they came when they had JJ and everything. They came here and played England one one. Can you imagine? They came here and played England. They could have played them in the pub, but for me, I thought oh, these guys just came to London to go to Harrods. They didn't really want to come and play because you know they have this. Inferiority complex. A lot of, a lot, to be fair, a lot of African teams have this inferiority complex when it comes to playing against England. They just see them as their colonizers and they just play crap. So, but in the first 35 minutes, Senegal put pressure on them. And I'm, I'm afraid it's not going to be 35 minutes in France. It's going to be the whole freaking match. And England didn't have it. Benin was playing. All the, all the, all the, I mean, Kane was playing, but they couldn't even touch the ball. First 35 minutes. So that worries me in a way. About England's chance of going forward, but hopefully they they do they go forward and and they go all the way to the final and then get blown away by Brazil. I don't know. <laughs> you you make a really good point, and and I applauded that point that you made in regards to when England played Senegal in the last round. You saw how many times Harry um, Harry Maguire and Stones lost the ball in the progressive first part, and then the Senegalese never capitalised 
on the fact that that, that, that on that they never capitalized on it. France won't make that mistake. You give that ball to Dembele, Guizman, Mbappe. You give it all. Good night, sweetheart. They will finish you and punish you for that. So you make a good point about all this. Um, Harry Maguire got away with so much in that Senegalese game in that first half. You know, and I don't think that um, France would be so forgiving if those opportunities came their way in regards to that. Um. So yeah, I I'm, I'm a great. I, I, I do get what you're saying in regards to... Um, it's interesting. Remember when we think about France? France is like Africa anyway, because yeah. they have so many African heritage players. In the, it's always interesting when Pele said an African team will win a World you Cup did. by so-and-so. I said, they've done it already. He said that they've been playing for France. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know? Exactly. So it's, it's interesting, interesting in regards to... to if, if the right environment, the right coaching, the right facilities, the right opportunities are there, African players will flourish at the top, top level. It's just that maybe we don't have the same resources as what France has, some of these other African teams. But with the players and the ability and the technique, it's all there. So, yeah, England going to have their hands full, man. They're going to have their hands full. So but do you, know, you one want to revise thing, your score? One, sorry? You want to revise your score now? Or you still um, say 3-2? No, England, England, you got it. I've got, I've just got this feeling that what what they went through in the Euros will stand them in good stead for France. You can't waste that experience that you had in the Euros. You can't get to a finals of a major championship and then and then not use that that uh not use that that um that you know, what, you know, whatever it is that you've lost in, in regards to that passion or the that, mentality. That, that, no, that's experience. That's why Croatia are going, got this far. It's because they got to the final the last time. They know how to do it. And I think that England, as such a young team, they still know how to do it. They've got there. But that's the same thing like that in Europe. You mean like Italy won the Nations Cup and won the Euros and even get, didn't even qualify for the World Cup? So that yeah, 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 was yeah, a yeah. what you said. <laughs> that put the league in the and they win. Exactly, not really like that, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, these things have been known to happen. Well, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, West, I mean Germany, four World, Ch- four World Cups, I haven't qualified for the last two World Cups. I mean, uh, past the first round in the last uh, two World Cups. So, hey, you know, these things happen. Anyway, um, moving on very quickly, let's just have score lines. You, you, I mean, you go what? Um, you said 3 2 or 2 1? What's the case? 2 okay. 1, 3 2. It's going to 120 minutes. Penalties, good night, England. But okay. they got to do it. Ben, yeah. what, what do you reckon? He's not, yeah, he's not going to do penalties. Believe me, 90 minutes. France, 3, England, 2. Okay. Wow, that's a game. Yeah. Okay. I think I think I'll probably go go for England winning one nil. You know, I think England will win. Will, will <laughs> that's okay. I mean, that's, that's, that's my view. Throw your bed, throw your bed to sleep away, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, the final match uh, I think is another fantastic matchup, right? And that's Portugal against Morocco. Now. So, ben, do you want to take this first, and then we'll go to Inca, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah fine. fine. Well, we saw, we saw what we saw what Portugal was all about. We saw, we saw they, they, they slammed six, six past, past. Who was it? Who was it? Who did they play? I say, I, 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 I didn't even know whether they were in the match. Switzerland. They, they played. No, no. Six, 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 six one. Six one. And they're gonna play this match on the front foot. My, my prediction, prediction for that, that match, match, I'm not going to say too much because we saw Ramos. Ramos, Ramos is starting, start, that's, that's for sure. sure. Ramos, Ramos is going to try and get, he's going to be, the, he's going to get two hat tricks this, this World Cup. Um, um, I, I think they're going to, they're going to dismantle that team, send them packing. Um, I know Morocco is good. Morocco is good. They're very good at defending. Um, but I think, I think it's going to be, it's going to be one, 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 we saw what happened. Japan scattered two guys, two teams. And came in and, and, and then just lost it all. And they had all that experience from those two matches. You played Germany, beat them. Played, played the other guys, beat them as well. Spain, it was Spain, wasn't it? Played Spain, beat them as well. Yeah. And yet, the first and second teams in that group might as well have fought, might as well have not even come out of the group because both of them are gone. Japan topped the group, they're gone. Spain was second, they're gone as well. 
So, so to my mind, mind I, I think, think that, that Morocco, Morocco will give a good game. game. It will be, be a very, very tight, tight game. game. They, they won't score, score six, six, that's for sure. They're yeah, not going to score six against these Moroccans. Not with Amrabat and, and, and so far. And they, they, those guys are just, just, they're, just, they're very good defending. So I think it's going to be a tight match. I think it's going to be 2-0. To Portugal. Portugal. Okay. You go. Are you writing these things down? <laughs> it's, it's a recording, hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's recording, so we just go back and, and, and look it's been it. recorded. Yeah. I thought, I, yeah, that's yeah. true. I thought I was in the sitting room with you. Oh. <laughs> right, so what, what do you know about you, girl? 2002 World Cup, Japan and Korea. Korea got to the semi finals. 2010, South Africa, Ghana got to the quarter finals. We see over the years and the romance of these home nations, quote unquote, going further than maybe we would think on paper they could go. My money is on Morocco getting past Portugal by any means necessary, whether it be by penalties, dodgy VAR, maybe upstairs, the Qataris might want to put a little, whatever it be. I believe that somehow, some way, that Morocco can do it. Um, don't, the power of underestimation has happened before, and I think they will underestimate Morocco, Portugal. They've come off 6 one. They've played glorious football. Ronaldo's been sitting on the bench. They've got a new striker in Ramos. But, I, but there's just something in me. It's the, I think it's the football romantic in me that I'm going for Morocco in this. And, and it's, it's going to be England Morocco semi final in there. So, so my scoreline score is maybe penalties, maybe injury time. time. No one to put all these 12 minutes uh, <laughs> stoppage time at the end of the game. I don't know what they're adding all this extra, extra time, time from, you know. But um, I, I, I just. And the thing is, if you ask me who are the Morocco players, I can't tell you. I think I could tell you Hakimi and Araba and maybe Sofao, one or two players. Hold on, Ziek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what I'm saying. Is that by the individual, there's no way they can win this game. But there's something about the romance of football and the passion of football. But there's something about the romance of football and the football gods that Morocco will get past Portugal. You know the funny thing about it's funny how people underestimate Morocco. Like you, you said you can't name anybody in the team. But if you look at the, if you look across the team, right? Bono was actually the keeper of the year in 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 La Liga last year. For Seville, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So he's got pedigree to, to start with. Hakimi, Hakimi plays for PSG. Oh, brilliant! He's the best right back in the World Cup by far. Ex- exactly. So he plays for PSG. Far. You have Amrabat. Amrabat for me. For me so far, solid. It's, it's probably one of the most solid midfielders we've seen in the World Cup so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll yeah, yeah. team alongside with Ben Tanko, you know, because he's... Yeah. The only, if, if, if there's something in this game that doesn't have, it's maybe that box-to-box element of, of Ben Tanko's game, right? But he mm-hmm. reads the game so brilliantly. He has the ability to sort of top play in, across the back, I mean, in front of the back four. If you, look, if you watch all of his games that he's played so far, nothing has gone past him. Because he wins so, so well, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. Now he's up. He's up against uh, J- Jao. What, what's that young man? Young man's name? You know, Felix. You know, and Jao um, and 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 um, and um, uh, what's 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 the other young man's name that plays for? Uh, uh, you got Silva. Ben, ben, ben uh, you know, you know. Um, 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 yeah. But but yeah. he he, he, he he's, he's proved himself against the play Spanish out, people. Out, this, out, this, you know, Spain who pass the ball and you know will pass you to death. You know. The, they got um, Ronaldo. Fine. Okay, he may or may not play. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Man, he's got he's got back of experience and all that sort of thing. You know, he can't play. It's, 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 it's interesting that you say that. Why would you play Ronaldo now? He's already he's already been passed. I think he told the um, the coach in the last game. He would he, he done a little bad language to the coach coming off, and the coach tried to discipline him. But they play so much better. Is that Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Man United, United played play better with that. Right? <laughs> like everyone, is, the common denominator here is Ronaldo. Whether it's Ten Hag, whether it's the uh, Portuguese coach, whether it's uh, Ranjek, 
everybody has seen something that we haven't seen is that Ronaldo doesn't produce a good team football no more. He might be individually still brilliant, but to, for the sake of your team, I don't think Ronaldo is impactful on a team basis. So I, I, I'm agreeing with Ben, I don't think they play it. Be that as it may, I mean, you had the young man who scored a hat trick, um, yeah, yeah, the other day against um, against Switzerland. Switzerland are not Morocco. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't think Swiss, they don't even have the same defensive record as, as Morocco. Has Morocco considered any, any goals in this? Any goals in this in this court, In this um... one goal, uh, I think it's just one goal. I think they've conceded. If not, none. Right. So, who do they concede against? Do you know? Um, good point. Right, so for me, so, I mean, okay. they they have they have they they've, they've sort of been very very solid this this thus far. I mean, I, I think one of one of the keys to 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 having them is like I, Morocco have been absolutely fantastic. I mean, it, it, against Belgium, what what was the what was the score against Belgium? They, they beat Belgium two 0 wasn't it? Right? Yeah. yeah. So for Spikes me, them two 0 by the way. Oh, well, there you go. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So it was. It was. It was. It was. It was. Yeah, it's solid. Solid performance. Um, all, all. 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 the way for for me from for Morocco, and I think a lot of teams haven't given them enough credit because they're an African team, and because they're an African team, they are, they're sometimes like, yeah, they they wouldn't they wouldn't do so well, or they they, they would be like pushovers, or you know, it would be it would be it would be they would be hard to against you know yeah i think um yeah morocco against croatia it was nil nil you know they, they, no. croatia, they, didn't, they didn't score against them against canada um i think it was 2-1 two, one. Yeah, two, two one. one against canada so canada two, canada, canada be the only team that has scored against morocco this but was fight in this world cup you know so, canada, canada have been the only oh, yeah, team yeah, yeah. that's scored against yeah, yeah, morocco yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in this world cup so far you know so they, they have been solid defensively, and, and the, the, the only person that put that down to is Amrabat in front of for that back back four. It's been absolutely immense, and I think he's going to do the same. He's thing in the team. He's in the team of the World Cup, I think. Yeah. So for me, it's yeah. um, it's sort of it's very very solid. I mean, you guys have been absolutely fantastic. So if we look going by the predictions you've got so far, right? <laughs> yeah. Brazil, Argentina. Right, looks like uh, what's going to happen in the, in the semi-final on, the, on that side, and it's looking like England against Morocco on, on this side. <laughs> no, because, because you, 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 you support England. Well, I want England to get through, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be Brazil, Argentina, and um, France. It's going to be France. France. It's going to be France. Brazil final. Just okay. Let's, let's go and match it. As they say in Nigeria, go and match it. <laughs> I love I love how 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 we we've, we've taken positions on this so far, but it's been fantastic having you guys. Inka, thank you so much. Uh, we look forward to seeing what the matchups look like. You know, uh, the first yeah. match uh, is what Brazil Friday. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tomorrow. Kick off tomorrow, man. Seven, seven o'clock. Uh, UK, UK time. time. Sorry, what? yeah, seven o'clock UK time. Tomorrow is Thursday. No, it's on Friday, isn't it? Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. Well, well, well. Hey. <laughs> on Friday, exactly. Yeah, anyway. totally. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we we look forward to to the, to the first match in the um in the, in in the in the quarterfinals. Um, I think that's Brazil. Sorry, Argentina against um um who are they playing now? They're playing uh gosh, Netherlands. Yes, that, that's the first matchup. So look forward to that. And guys, thank you so much. It's been fantastic having you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. See ya. Good night, everyone. Take care. Good night, guys. Good night.